So whether it's physical or emotion, imagine what life would be like without any pain. At all. What's any pain. Don't you don't feel, feel pain. Like, for instance, no, don't. I what? hate pain. You know. Ow, stop. <laughs> stop it. OK. Well, our first guest, Jo Cameron, she is an amazing woman. She's like something from um, the X X-Men. Yes. That's it. Like a superpower. Like yeah. yeah. She's ordinary. the only person in the world with this condition. It means that um, she doesn't feel childbirth, surgery. She's even broken limbs, which we'll talk about, which didn't cause no. you any... No? no? Get out. What did you break? My arm. When I was eight, I fell when I was roller skating and I just went into the house, didn't tell anyone. And three days later, my mother said, your arm looks a bit strange. It's a very... We better go and see what's, what you've done. And I'd broken it and I didn't know. Didn't feel any, no, any, any no, pain at all? No. Wow. The thing I find, uh, Dr Zoe's here, of course, yeah. which we'll get the medical side of this, but the thing I find extraordinary, Jo, is that you weren't diagnosed in, until you were in your 60s. No, because I am what I am, and nobody takes any notice of someone with no pain. Yes. yes. And I didn't... I didn't think... I just thought, or oh, maybe I was extremely healthy, and I also thought I was clumsy because I was always having marks and bumps on my arm. But as a child, you don't look at a child who's crying thinking, I'd like to have pain like that. You might look and say, I'd like to have a bike like that, but you don't envy <laughs> yeah. nobody. Yeah. And yeah. so you are what you are. No one questioned it. I didn't question it. And did people think, like, your parents and teachers, did everyone think you were just a tough kid? If you fell over and grazed your knee, you were well, one of those kids that just got up and carried on? Well, my mother on. was very matter-of-fact, loving, but matter-of-fact anyway. Yeah. But also, my father died 30 years ago, so we can't check this. But looking back, I think maybe he was the same as me because everyone said as a child, you're just like your dad, disposition like your dad, you're happy and blah, blah, blah. And I think maybe that's where it came from. But people don't, you know, doctors don't... If you're not, if you're not in pain, mm -hmm. there's so many people who are in pain. Yeah. They're the ones who are looked at and noticed. But when you went... When you had... You've got two children. Yeah. So, you know, women experience pain yeah. in childbirth. So surely at that point... I mean, I kind of get the childhood thing, but... Yeah. but in childbirth, well, they're was... thinking this woman's like I experiencing didn't... no pain at all. This is I... extraordinary. I didn't have my first child until I was 30, and my yeah. second at 42. For no reason, it just didn't happen. And by that time, by 30, every, all my friends had had babies, and they all said, take everything that's going, everything mm. that's going, don't be a martyr. So in my head, I went into childbirth thinking, I'll take everything that's going. And all the time I was in labour, I was thinking, when it gets painful, I'm taking something. Yeah. When it's get pain, but it never got painful. And because in a labour ward there are so many other women mm. requiring... Nobody n noticed, no-one bothered. Because I didn't ask for anything, I just wow. had the baby. And to me it was normal. But I, in my head, I'm the second child, but it didn't dawn on me when I had the first child that yeah. it was abnormal. And I went in for the second time thinking, when it's painful, I'm not a martyr, I just thought you were lucky first time. Yeah, no, but, yeah. you, but because you're so abnormal, you're so abnormal, <laughs> medical you. science <laughs> is fascinated with you. I, I mean, they do. will you be taken off to an X-Men well, house? I, 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 <laughs> six years they've been experimenting on me. Have they, right? Yeah, I mean, they, so so, so yeah. tell, why, why would her condition be of such interest then? Yeah, I mean, Jill's condition is absolutely fascinating <laughs> because mostly for scientists they're interested because mm -hmm. it means that it opens up a whole new journey of exploring pain medication. So particularly around post-operative pain, people who have chronic pain, um, and also anxiety and depression yeah, because you're I'm immune not... from those as yeah, well. I'm no happy. fear, no stress. So this so... is all... Uh, so that's something to do with the FAR gene, and it's that's a mutation right. of that. So how can you explain that to simple yes. people like myself? So, you know, we all have lots of genes, and when something goes wrong with the gene, we tend to think of it as a bad thing because that means things don't function as they should. And with Joe, that is the case. There are two separate genes genes that are both not functioning quite as they should. So basically it means that they're not able to produce proteins in the right way. The they're proteins like they pain produce. receptors or something. So they affect the pain receptors. So in Joe's case, her nerves are fine. So when we put our hands in this water, mm -hmm. um, she'll feel the cold. But in order for your brain to register pain, mm. it, it has to travel through the nerves and almost through several gates. And in, in us, the gates are open and closed, mostly open, but they can be closed. In Joe, those gates are closed the whole time. They're never open. And that's because mm. the genes make proteins that keep those gates closed. You see, Ruth has this condition in complete reverse, it has to be said. Literally, if you touch it, I go, ow! The... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> ow! Stop it! It's the same. I mean, I'm just... It's, it's, in, it's in reverse. Now, my producer, nothing to do with me, and uh, nobody was hurt in the making of this programme, as you'd have to say, uh, my producer says that this is a Scotch bonnet, mm. uh, which is a form of chilli, which is the hottest known thing 
on planet Earth, apparently, if you eat this sort of thing. And apparently you just can't... Zoe, you're, and I mean, you're a doctor here. This will raise her blood pressure, this will hurt her mouth, this would... I well, mean, my producer said to me, eat one with her, Eamon. I said, no. <laughs> so Not even a slice? Not even not a slice. Even going to not even a slice. <laughs> are you seriously, are you seriously going to chew this? I've only had one once before, That's uh, and that was on video. I'll try it. Right, are we OK? Is everybody happy with her time with this? Are you happy, Zoe? OK. Um, yes. Come on, I'll try it. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So would it be like if... So you can't taste burning in your mouth, and if you were to swallow that... I'm not you do, it. But you yeah. could swallow it, and then nothing down your esophagus into your stomach. Oh, my word. So what... It's oh, weird. no, don't eat anymore. It's weird. That's, so, that's, I think that, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's probably that's enough. Um, so what are you feeling? It was literally, we would be on fire now. I would, my, well, I would feel it's, ill. It's probably. warm. I have a nice warm, warm, a nice glowing, warm feeling in my mouth. That's it. But is, is this, this could be dangerous, though, Zoe, because well, I presume most absolutely. of we feel pain to keep us safe. That, yes, you know, well, that's absolutely. why you're feeling Stop because it's it just now, to keep you safe. <laughs> there are many. Absolutely. And I think if you think of our ancestors, then not feeling pain and not feeling fear would have been very dangerous. Yes. You know, they wouldn't yes. survive. Whereas in today's world, actually, it is kind of a superpower, not feeling pain, but doesn't come without its dangers. So, you know, you've injured yourself oh, several yes, times. Many times. You? What and, kind of things do you do? Uh, well, I was just... <laughs> um, I... When, I, when I, my, my second child was about six months old, I was um, going to the hairdressers and I got her in the car, back of the car, parked the car at the hairdressers, and I got out of the car, took the buggy out of the boot, the boot went, locked, put, opened the back door where she was, locked the rest of the car so that I could just slam the door when she was in, so I didn't have to fiddle with keys, put the key in my pocket, got her out, had her in my arms and then went to shut the door but forgot to take my finger away. And I slammed the oh. door and my finger, you can see the dents, my finger oh. inside the door. So I sat, I stood in the, the <laughs> car park and I was saying, excuse me, excuse me. But it didn't hurt? No, but I, got, I couldn't get my hand out. Mm -hmm. I got a child in. Could you get the keys out of my pocket, please? And oh. <laughs> because my finger's well, caught in here. You know what you need? You need some iced water. <laughs> to put, to put so what we've got is we've got four big tubs of iced water very here in front of us. Water. Very, very cold. As you can see, there's, there's loads of ice things in here. And the idea is we've got a commercial break coming up and we're seeing how long each one of us can uh, put our hands in this water. I bet water. you give up first. So, Probably. <laughs> um, so here we are. We've got a clock on the screen and everybody yeah. ready, ready to dip. Here we One. go. Both yeah. hands. Yeah. Oh, Both stuff hands. that. <laughs> What's the... Both. Why... Come on, Eamon. <gasps> no, well, well, so this I feels is uncomfortable. What's isn't the it? point? That's I painful. Like so, can you, what, can you Joe, feel? how does that feel to you? Just cold. Yeah, I think just cold. Oh, oh. Now, the ends of my fingers Seriously? are hurting now. No. Yes, they're hurting think, now. No, it's just cold. <laughs> Oh, Zoe, she's a gladiator. I'm I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I will tell I'm not joking. It. Do I look it? it doesn't, it's, un it's uncomfortable, though. It doesn't for me. I'm so, wait, there's bits it. of you going blue. No, mine feels like it's burning. <laughs> no, like no, ice seriously, burn. seriously. Okay. So, it's close up camera burn. here. No. So there's shot. bits of Zoe <laughs> that, are going, that are going blue here. Look at her fingernails. <laughs> they're they're going one. completely blue. Uh, it's incredible. It's uh, incredible. But you're OK? Right, OK. Well, tell you what, let's take a break and see if anything's fallen off I'm right out, after I'm this. I'm out, I'm out, I'm okay. out. It's <laughs> me and you, Joe. Yeah. I should say to you, uh, one of our guests here is a former gladiator and not <laughs> a doctor, which is true, and the other is just Jo Cameron, who's 71 years of age and she's from Inverness and she doesn't feel pain and her hands have been in iced water for six or so minutes. Mm. And, um, and what do you feel? Cold. Cold. <laughs> Just cold? Just cold. So you I... feel a bit cold? Oh, it feels cold. I right, feel... so what do you usually feel? I feel like my hand is stuck in a lot of shards of glass. It's freezing cold yes. and very, very painful. But do you reckon you can do that simply because you have the mentality of a gladiator? <laughs> no, She's seriously, competitive. seriously. Just very stubborn. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But eventually your hand would turn blue and fall off. Uh, well, I think, actually, to be honest, I think the water would warm up before that I think happen. We, yeah. I think so, right. this is, Yeah, this is actually, it's a safe We're test winning. for pain tolerance. Well, I stuck my hand in there for, I reckon, two seconds and my fingers are still cold. You're such a baby. With pain. I'm not such a baby. Why am I... Why <laughs> I lost people, about this morning, don't pay me half. enough money to get <laughs> frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> but interesting, so you're, you're... Joe's just saying it's a bit cold, yeah, but you're, it's very uncomfortable it's very, for you. In fact, it was more uncomfortable. Now it's gone quite numb, so it's got a little bit easier. Well, I think we should let you... Get it out. Let you out there. Get it out towel to dry yeah. off. Mm. But listen, oh my goodness me, that feels, oh, that's so cold. <laughs> Gosh. 
But you also, this, this gene mutation makes you very happy, a very happy person. Yes, as well. yes. I, I produce. Is it an anandamide? An is that what it is? Yes. I produce, yeah, I protein, produce yeah. seven times more than other people. I and, must produce that as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when I had my hip replacement, yes. um, they people didn't know about this then, and I um, automatically they give you without asking um, a slow release morphine injection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Within minutes of having it, I became very sick. Yeah. I was very Ill. My hip didn't bother me, but yeah. for two days I was very sick. you could do it yourself. Well, they realise now that they must have given me an overdose. I already... Had produced. it in your system. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and giving me the... that They gave me the equivalent yeah. of an overdose. They overdosed yeah. me on morphine. I mean, Joe, lovely. Eamon's so. had hip surgery yes. and you had just paracetamol, no pain. I didn't have paracetamol. Yeah. Same as me, I took hardly any drugs. I and I was always didn't happy. Didn't complain at all. Didn't complain at all <laughs> about the whole thing. Yeah. But thank you. It's been it's lovely okay. meeting you. It's been lovely meeting you, Joe. Oh! Anyway, thanks, Doctor. Thank you very much, Dave.